How can we make use of the Navigator panel in Affinity Photo to improve our workflows? Let's take a look. First, we need to enable the Navigator panel. This can be done using the Window menu. The Navigator panel shows a preview of the whole document, canvas and the current zoom. The first thing we can do on the Navigator panel is panning the document by moving the cursor on the panel which is not so special. We can also pan the document using the space key. Another way of panning is click and holding the middle mouse button and when you have the Apple mouse or the trackpad, we can also pan by holding the mouse button and use scrolling. Besides panning, the navigator panel also allows you to quickly zoom the document by moving the zoom slider. You'll notice that there are tick marks below the slider. These are common zoom percentages like 50, 100, 200 and so forth. The slider will snap to these tick marks, which is pretty handy. What most people don't know is that you can hold the Alt or Option key to turn off the snapping. We can also use the plus and minus buttons in the navigator panel to quickly switch to the zoom percentages of the tick marks. This can be very useful to move between the default zoom percentages. The final way of zooming is by manually entering a zoom percentage in the zoom text box. When we click on the zoom value text, the text will be auto-selected, allowing you to quickly overwrite the value. Here is a nice tip that no one tells you. While the zoom text box on the navigator panel has the focus, you can press the arrow up and arrow down key to change the zoom percentage in 1% steps. When we zoom over 100%, notice how the Navigator Preview shows the currently shown area in a grey box. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, we can use the panning feature of the Navigator to move this around, allowing us to move quickly of an area of interest. Pretty cool! While this is all nice, the actual power of the Navigator lies in saving the viewpoints. I already have some saved viewpoints which are available in the drop down box under the zoom percentage. When I select the viewpoint, Affinity will automatically update the zoom and the canvas position. But the real power comes when you use keyboard shortcuts. While working on the document, I can quickly press a keyboard shortcut to cycle between the saved viewpoints. By the way, to assign a keyboard shortcut to switch between the defined viewports, we can use the preferences. Under Shortcuts, select the View option and assign keyboard shortcuts to the move to the previous viewpoint and move to the next viewpoint items. To create new viewpoints, zoom and position the canvas first. To create new viewpoints after you zoomed and positioned your canvas, from the Navigator panel, use the Hamburger menu and choose Save Current Viewpoint. A new viewpoint will be added and automatically selected. To rename the selected viewpoint, we can again use the hamburger menu in the navigator panel and this time choose Rename Viewpoint. In my workflow, I usually put in a description what needs to be done in the zoomed area. In this case, there is a white line here which needs to be removed. In a sense, the viewpoints will act like a to-do list as they are also saved with the document. To demonstrate that, I can close the document and when I reopen it, all the viewpoints are restored. Most of the time I'll add these to-do items when I'm working on a part of the image and notice something. For example, when I was masking the subjects, I noticed that the subject in the center could use some retouching. So I have added a whitened teeth and highlight eyes viewpoint. This way, I could continue masking and would not forget that I needed to fix the teeth and the eyes. Let me fix the teeth and the eyes by adding a pixel layer in soft light and quickly use the brush tool in white to get the desired effect. After I do my modifications, I usually rename the viewpoint and add an emoji to it, indicating that this has been done. This way, the viewpoint list, besides being a to-do list, also acts as an overview of the changes. This has the advantage of 1. Keeping track of the changes, 2. Where did I do them, and 3. Allowing me to quickly go back and fine-tune the changes if needed. In this document you can see I still have some work to do. As this image is about coffee, I wanted to add a bit more brown color to the composition. An easy fix for that would be to change the color of the bag and the shoes for the man at the right. I can switch to my viewpoint, fix the issue, which I already done before, 
and rename the viewpoint to mark it as done. Some actions could be destructive or would not make sense after the fix. Like in this example, the white line added here was a mistake by me. I'm just going to remove this layer. In this case, I'll just remove the viewpoint. As you might have noticed that some of the viewpoints have a loop emoji in front of them. They are just views and have no action linked to them. The only big disadvantage of the viewpoint list is that you cannot order them. They are always shown in the order they are added. I hope this video has given you some inspiration how to use the navigator panel in Affinity Photo. Let me know in the comments whether you use the navigator panel at all and if you do and how do you make use of it. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.